All right, uh, welcome back everybody here in Twitch and also on YouTube if you're watching there um, for Orzov Midrange again. So we played this deck yesterday and we did pretty good with it. Um, but then at the at the end, uh, I was talking about some changes that I think could be kind of good for the deck. And uh, then we got another donation from Julius again to try out some of those changes. So Julius uh, changed it up to here. So let's let's see. So we have um, talk about a couple of things that we have different. So we don't have the Izareths anymore, um, or the other, or like the the uh, two mana Death Touch creature. But we got some History Banalias. So History we know is just an awesome card, right? Um, uh, so we got our four History Banalias there, which we did cut a couple Midnight Reapers for those as well, but. Um, that's probably okay. So we got our, our four history banalias and we got the 25th land, which I think that adding the 25th land is certainly going to be very important. Um, sideboard wise, we have some immortal suns in for the soul tie matchup and, um, we don't have to call the honor guards. So ye yesterday the honor guards were good for us sometimes, but we don't have those in so that we can still keep uh seeker squire and chupacabra, um, in our decks. So we don't have to take those out, uh, for honor guard. So we'll see if this is worth it. Uh, we'll basically see if Chup, Chup and Squire is worth it, or maybe we should just be playing Honor Guard and go even more white with the deck with having the histories also. Um, but there we go. All right, Orzov Midrange. Arby with the sub, sub number five on the day. Thanks, Arby, for subbing here again for four months. It's very kind. All right, so let's... That's our fifth sub of the day, so every five subs we like to get a pack. I'm getting Rivals of Ixalan packs right now, because I'm going to try to get some Storm of the Vaults. That's my goal. So we'll see if we get a Storm of the Vault. I feel like making a Storm of the Vault deck. I don't know exactly what it'll look like. Um, most likely won't be good. But that's a deck that... That's a card that just... I haven't really seen anybody play, and so I want to try it. Hey, look at that. Storm of the Vault. Called it. All right, so that's our second one of those. Now we opened one yesterday as well, so we got two of them now. So, all right, <laughs> pre-recorded. A uh, thousand gold for Orzov Midrange. Hey, Kiesel. Do y'all think I should get one of those racing chairs? Do y'all think they make a big difference? I don't... I don't my, my chair is not that comfortable. It's just like an office chair. It's not that comfortable. I've never sat in like a racing chair, though. One of those gamer chairs. Basically, are they they support my back very well? Okay, that's that's definitely um, important. Really, the big thing is like my knees. I feel like my knees hurt after a while because I will you know like cross. Uh, I guess mortify. No, I'll get rid of contempt. Um, you know, I'll cross my legs. Like while I'm sitting down for a while here and whenever I cross my legs, like after a while, like my knees will kind of hurt. Okay, I could try them in like Best Buy. That'd be kind of nice. I could just go try them myself. Kulo King says it's completely worth it. Okay. Get a high quality office chair for back support. Air on chair by by Herman Miller. The air on the air on chair by Herman Miller. This pen doesn't work too well. Where's a pen that works? Here, pen that works. So 
So Aaron, Chair, Herman. We're playing against a discard deck in standard, a real discard deck. They're pricey, but the best investment you can make with as much time as we spend at a desk. Okay. Spend your money where you spend your time. That's a good that's a good point. Alright, I'll have to check that out. Take a look. Cause yeah, I've had I've had this chair for a very long time, basically since I started streaming um, two and a half years ago, and it's just not very comfortable. chairs are like $1,200. I guess there's different sizes. Size A, size B, size C. The size B one is only $600. This one's $545. Is that one good? Twilight Prophet. That's that's a good amount of my monthly income though. That's pretty expensive. But it's probably worth it for her sitting down for seven to eight hours. Or basically like eight hours every single day sitting here. There's a fitting chart on the website. Okay. Cancel. Oh, so like, do they they have their own showrooms like that I can just go, um, and go to? Yeah, this this chair I I got without trying it first. Reviews were pretty good though on it. So in one year, that's 2,920 hours. That's so many hours. Hmm. So I can attack, and they block Tithe Taker. I deal three, I get another token. They could block Seeker Squire. I don't get a token, I deal four. That's a good point, that I probably would be able to stream longer in a more comfortable chair. Hmm. 
What kind of what kind of like store would I go to? They didn't do any blocking at all last turn. What kind of store would have like those Aeron chairs, Adam? To try. I live in at Roanoke, Virginia. Yeah, R Roanoke, Roanoke, Virginia. Night Vale Predator. So they can, uh, I don't know. We're just gonna keep attacking. The hiking chair? That's like what I have here, is I have like a $150 office chair. Hey, what's up, Fire Shark? Am I near? Uh, I don't know. I've never heard of those places. So pro probably not. But then again, I don't I don't really know what I'm around here at Roanoke. I I haven't lived here that long. Or, yeah. <laughs> I I don't know. All right, so they're playing like a blue black deck that has like some discard and some removal and some flyers. So. I think like Midnight Reaper, Troops, maybe some Immortal Sun. I think just things that get me multiple cards. It's going to be what I want here. Hey, Jelly. Let's see. Can you get rid of cast downs of one Mortify? In the contempt. It's probably fine. Probably just don't need very much removal. I brought an extra Tupacabra. Okay, that's good to know, Cloaking. I basically... I want to share that... Is comfortable enough that I'm not like sitting on my leg, you know, crossing my leg like that. It's just like I don't know, like there doesn't seem to, there's just not like enough back support here or something where I'm. I feel a whole lot more comfortable if I'm like, you know, if I tuck my leg underneath and I'm sitting on my leg. It feels a lot more comfortable, but I don't want to do that because that's not very good for my knees, and so like m my knees will hurt sometimes, like after streaming. That's the big thing. Is Knees don't feel so good. So green hat, what'd you see so one okay, autonomous.ai? Um
All right. Hey, yeah, it's going good. No, y'all are good. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to check out that anonymous or auto auto anonymous. That's weird to say. So no land drop for the opponent. Sorry, you missed quasi duple ooze. Yeah, it's, it'll be up on YouTube in like 40 minutes or so. The the John Dagro is already up there. Um, quasi duple ooze has about 40 minutes or so. Yeah, Bant Flash is is just a strong deck. That's that's my favorite deck. Thanks, Green Hat Man. Thanks for the advice. Splendid an Angel back. I mean, this is just going to trade with the Nightville Predator eventually, anyway. Yeah, I've been, yeah, I've been uh, adding songs every, you know, every now and again to the the playlist. Um, Yeah, I want to, I need to keep adding. Like, that's that's something that I'm planning on to continuing to do. But when I first made the, when I first made the playlist here on Spotify and we switched over, it's like basically when the YouTube video started, I was at like 600 songs and we're at like 643 now. So, you know, it's getting larger. Hey, 21 months. Wow, thank you so much, Zerf, for that tier 3 sub yet again. Let's get some hype in the channel for Zerf's tier 3 sub. Zerf, you are amazing. Double Night Vale Predator. That's rude. Hey, Fred, thanks for the bits. Alright, so that's sub number 6 on the day. Um, I think Resplendent Angel is kind of better for us than Lyra. Now, Lyra is good against specifically Night Vale Predator, but I like how Resplendent Angel can make more angels. That's why I was grabbing it. Because if we figured, like, the Predator would trade with my Resplendent, you know, like, so we already trade those, so, like, just what individual card would I rather have on the battlefield, uh, like, a Lyra... Or a Resplendent. I'd rather have a Resplendent because of the ability to make more angels, where Lyra doesn't have that ability. Mm. 
Now we need to get this sixth land. No, that was my sixth land. I needed that. I need the sixth land. So I can activate Resplendent Angel. Yeah, I was just kind of assuming that the one in, in play was just going to be was kind of dead because of Nightfall Predator. I should probably attack with Midnight Reaper also. Nah, I don't know if I need to. Alright, so now we make a 4-4. And now we can attack with the 4-4 until they deal with the 4-4. Um, and, you know, if they, if they want to trade Predator for 4-4, we're good. Then we can kind of start all over. Hey, Onion Belt with that new Twitch Prime sub as well. Thanks, Onion Belt. Thank you kindly. Alright, that moves us to 88. No, 87. Nice. So it's 87 and 7. Enjoy the emotes. Hopefully I hear back about getting new emotes soon. Aw, uh, thanks on your belt. That's what, that's what I try to have here is a good wholesome stream that um, could be on anywhere. Nice, you're getting the new sub badge in a week. Awesome. That's also another thing that... Uh, I have some other things I'm working on right now, but something I'm planning on working on in the future of making it... Making the, the different sub-badges um, more noticeable than what they are right now. Hawkeye in a tie is not an emo. That should probably be an emo, shouldn't it? Ooh, quasi duplicate. No, uh, emotes. The ones that I was talking about was um, a final boss emote. Uh, so, trying to get five new emotes. Um, a final boss emote, a pack opening emote for whenever we get packs. Um, so they're at. I'm just. I want to trade Resplendent Angel for Night Veil Predator. Meh. Nah. Um, a five win, a five win dream emote. We're trying to get to five wins um, in these events. So that's three. Um, a cat butt emote. Everybody really wants a cat buddy emote. Um, I think it's kind of whatever, but a lot of people really want that for Hawkeye jumping in front of the camera. And a Santa, a Santa Claus emote for when people gift subs. No, you, yeah, you, you can you can uh, activate Resplendent Angel on your opponent's turn. Absolutely on defense, um, we just we just don't where we're at. We just don't need to worry about having the defense up right now. So I can just attack out and kill my opponent here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that. They can block three creatures, and they still take seven. All right. Or is that mid-range getting a, a pretty easy win there to start with? <laughs> yeah, the opponent had some Azure Drakes there, some two fours. Um. Turn it down.
Oh gosh. All right, well, I'll keep some lands. Um, no, that gate deck looks very reasonable. Mass Manipulation is like a, a card that a lot of gates decks have. That one doesn't have it. But no, that looks, that looks pretty good. We'll still curve out. See, we already got a two drop. We can still curve out. Oh yeah. And now we get our free land. Uh. You've been playing two repudiate replicate in the quasi duplicate ooze deck cyborg to stop Vivian Ultimate and Krasis on cast trigger. Okay, yeah, we were talking about that um, that card some beforehand. It is very good against Krasis, and we got roughed up pretty bad by Hostage Taker. That that could certainly stop Hostage Taker. Um, you know, being basically a two mana dive down uh, for the most part there. Um, and yeah, stopping a Vivian ultimate. Yeah, we got, we lost the game because of Vivian ultimate. So that would have been nice to have that card there. So yeah, that, that could certainly be a card for the, the deck. Well, good news is our opponent isn't doing anything. Their first seven cards don't really matter. Hopefully these cards don't really matter either. Carnage. Good choice. Good choice. Ooh. Do I give them the blue mana or nah? Karn's at six. That's such an annoying number to be at. Guess I'll give them the blue mana. Why can't Karn be at five? This will not deter me. So, uh... Are you certain of your decision? Yeah, get that Vivian out of here. Uh, shouldn't have given the blue mana. Of course, they would have just minus Karn for that blue mana, but... Hey, nerd girl. Hope standard's going a little better. Ugh. Need to help with that soon. Attack here. Um, the Dill. Immortal Suns in the sideboard will certainly help out quite a bit um, for this matchup. Yeah, it's certainly in a lot of trouble with them taking Lyra. Hostage Taker has just been a whole lot better than Chupacabra against against these decks that I'm playing here. Hostage Taker has been a huge problem. You know, Chupacabra would have just killed Alira and then, you know, whatever. Then, you know, we fight on. Like, we have the Memorial Folly, we can get it back. All that kind of stuff. With them just casting Alira. I mean, we're not done. We can draw a removal spell. Yeah, Tristani could be a lot better these days, for sure. Well chosen. No, I... I well, I could see this game coming out on, on Max sometime, but... 
not sure if it will. The opponent having Lyra. Not good. Not good. I expect Karn to go get Vivian and make our life even worse. So I guess I made made the mistake of giving them the the land instead of the Krasis. If I give them the Krasis, then they have to minus one their Karn to grab the land, so their Karn would have been dead, so they wouldn't have been able to take up Karn these other two times and go and get Vivian and stuff like that. Alright, so we need Immortal Sons. Choops. Choop's good at killing Hostage Taker, but Choop's not a good card for them to Hostage Taker. 14 months. Thank you, Key. Thank you so much. Sub number 8 on the day. Keeping that storm count up. We have Settles and Contempt. Um, if I take out Doom Whisperer. Tithe Taker. Trim a Lyra. Could take out History Banalia instead. Let's try this. I think because of Hostage Shaker, I need to keep in like the cast downs and mortifies, which I don't usually love. Ah, there's a snowstorm there. Okay. That's not good. It seems like there's been snowstorms for the last, like, three, four weeks. Places. Let's get this thing back here. Alright, well, this is better than five cards. Five. <laughs> it is winter. Good, good point. That usually happens in winter. You're getting 12 inches of snow tonight? Oh no. Hope you got... Oh, you can stay warm. No, I haven't really thought of anything else with Nikki of the Old Ways besides Teamer and making the biggest crisis ever. No, that's kind of about it. That's a really fortunate negate for the opponent to have. in the gate. Hmm. Do I play Lyra? Yeah, I guess so. We're playing a Gruel deck with Nikia and Rhythm of the Wild. And it's been fun. Not necessarily the best, but fun. Okay. 
Yeah, I think... I think Teamer is, is kind of where I'd want to be with Nikia because... If you're have if you have a whole lot of mana, you kind of need that, and you can only spend it on creatures. Like you want to be able to use all that mana, and so Hydro Crisis is kind of the best thing to do there. You could play four colors and play Naya as well, um, or like play white as well and have uh, big dinosaur. Um, that's like, or even if you just don't want to play blue, if you want to just play Naya, if you're just you could play a bunch of the nine mana dinosaur. James, stop. That's that's all James's fault for saying hostage incoming. You don't say the best card the opponent can have, say that it's incoming. Because then the opponent has that. You have to be like, oh, they don't have anything. And then they don't have anything. And then we win. <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah, Zakama. That's that's the one I was talking about. Zakama. Yeah. So it certainly seems like Frass is contempt, I guess, that there does not um Just not casting the resplendent angel. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. But yeah, if you're doing it wrong, if your opponents like always have like the good cards against you, you're probably doing it wrong. My mission is more <laughs> you won't be needing that. I don't I don't think we can win this. Yeah, we can win this. All right, we need Yeah, like that that negate lined up really well. Uh don't have very many spells, but negating that history was just perfect. Um, we need to draw a mortal sun. That's what we need to draw. The belligerent needs her crew. They must have another negate. They've they've been so comfortable of just keeping the hostage taker there. They must have another negate, which is just, you know, pretty bad for me. I'll destroy all that you hold precious. Certainly seems like another game for how my opponent's playing. I'll make use of that later. Which takes out our only out. Yeah, they're just not even playing this resplendent angel. Yeah, set, I ha yeah, I have some settles, but that doesn't that card just doesn't do anything. It's it's the Vraska the Vraska that's gonna, that's killing us. That's a good draw. Especially if they have negate for their last card like they've been playing. Decisive. 
decisive action is needed. Oh, never mind. They had, I forgot they had a cast down there. My crew is the finest in the seas. My favorite list with Judith is the Rakdos Menagerie deck. Um, that's my favorite list with Judith. Yeah, which you can find, of course, in, in decks there. Look for Rakdos Menagerie. It's probably maybe four or five days old or so. Of course, there's a video on the, the YouTube. It has like Menagerie and. Um, Um, the four ma spawn of mayhem has spawn of mayhem as well. Cool, that's a, that's your favorite one too. Awesome, there you go. Hmm. So tithe taker is not so good against. Chain Whirler. That's their next card. Um, guess, guess let's just go Squire. Squire helps us get to land, which is very important when we need to get to Lyra. Planning on mortifying the next turn the Steamkin. And then Chupacabra, the other Steamkin, looks like now. Cool, best of luck, Chron Chronosaurus. Not really a reason to wait on that. And I don't think History Banalia is as good as Mortify there. I think just, just killing that thing is most important. I know that like Mortify could be good against an, a potential Experimental Frenzy. Down to eight. Down to six. Don't think Lyra's gonna save us now with Flame Flame Akelda's huge problem. Multiple cards, all the things deal a million damage next turn. We have to get pretty fortunate with them not drawing burn spells. They draw creatures, that's a kind of okay. Burn spells, not okay. We need to get to Lyra anyway. Okay. That's good. Uh, that deals four. All right, we're not dead yet. We need to we need to draw land for Lyra, and then we also need our opponent not to draw a burn spell yet again. They've only seen one burn spell in 15 cards, though. It's not land. And this is why we we're playing 25 lands, because we have to hit our fifth land drop, and that's just two turns in a row of us not hitting our fifth land drop. You know, if we hit it two turns ago, we could have already been attacking with Lyra this turn. But I'm glad we have 25 lands instead of 24. 24 is just not really possible. All right, so moment, moment, Choop Contempt, uh, Duress. And we are taking out Reaper. 
Whisper. Whisper is honestly not that bad here. Hmm. Maybe not Choop. Choops were good though. They do cost four mana, and we have even more removal with the moment of cravings. So we probably don't need them. Then I guess one Tithe Taker. Or just go three Duress. I'll take out one Tithe Taker. There's a Chain Whirler killing it. All right, yeah, hopefully we get to Lyra on turn five this time. That's it. Hopefully we get to Lyra earlier. Gross. Come on, deck. Really? Um, where do I stand on the matter for Nexus? being banned. I don't like Nexus, so I think the format would be better without Nexus in it, but I'm not I'm not really like clamoring that it has to be banned or anything like that, but I, I do think the format would be better without Nexus. I don't think it it adds much to the enjoyability. Don't like seeing that lava runner. Um, because it's just repeatable sources of damage. So I guess I'm gonna keep that moment of craving then. Um, so the squire should eat one wizard's lightning, presumably. All right, so we're gonna be at 14. Pass him back to them. All right, I like them using the that other wizard's lightning. Not on my resplendent angel. So I'm really glad our opponent just wanted just to throw burn spells at us and not even wait. They could certainly have been more patient. Oh, all right, I guess they don't care. No, I wouldn't say that Tithe Taker is completely replaced. Um, Adanto Vanguard is the two drop of most decks. I think... I could see Adanto Vanguard being better than Tithe Taker, honestly. Um, I don't... It's kind of like, they're both really close, and I'm not really sure which one... is better for the Angel deck. Yeah, aggro decks, you definitely want a Dante Vanguard, absolutely. But Angel's decks, I could see it kind of being either one. Alright, game three. Not a good hand against Mono Red per se. There we go, that, that made it a lot better. But I like just having two drop, three drop, good mana. You know, I just don't think this is a mulligan. Yeah, Duress, Duress helped us out there that game of taking the light up the stage. That, act, that certainly helped. What is the opponent doing? Just keeping 
keeping the one lander that doesn't have any spells to play. Oh. That was an easy win. Yeah, that was... When you're on the play, you should not keep a one land hand on the play like that. I mean, if you have just a whole lot of one drops, maybe. But it certainly doesn't seem like it. I mean, they didn't play a single card on turn one, so it did not seem like it, of course, that they had just a bunch of one drops. Yeah, that was a free one. Hmm, mono blue. If it's mono blue. It is. I'm stopping on my end step. Cast down this thing. Because I don't want them to... Because I've, I've had that happen before where they just untap, put Curious Obsession on their creature, and then just have a bunch of dive downs. And I do not want that to happen. Um, I'm just gonna tight taker. Tight taker is actually kind of nice here. Make make it so like them spending mana on my turn costs more. So they do have obsession. And then if they don't draw a land here, we get to mortify and they cannot protect it. So hopefully no land, no land. There we go. Mortify this. Good job, tight taker. Yeah, Tithe Taker's actually doing awesome here. Get to play Lyra. They don't have the mana. I'm not even. I don't want to even trade my Tithe Taker for a, a Storm Tamer. I don't want to attack there. Yeah, Discord integration's gonna be pretty sweet. That's certainly one of my next things I'm gonna be trying to do is really upgrade the disc, the Discord channel, and um, improve it quite a bit. Um, so duress moment certainly come in. Maybe not choop. Um, but yeah, I have, I have a, a lot of ideas here for a bunch of like discord rooms to be able to add in, to be able to really grow a discord community. Um, we're going to be doing that within the next couple of days. So when, when that happens, of course, I'll be talking about it quite a bit, um, here in chat and, and link in the discord for everybody to join and everything. Uh, 65 is where I'm sitting at right now. It's too many fours. I guess I'm not playing choop. And then I'm going to take out two Squire. I suppose it's cards that don't do a whole lot. So the next set, the next set is called War of the Spark. Huh? I saw that the pre-release is like the end of April for War of the Spark. All right, I like the Tithe Takers. Double Tithe Taker make it difficult for them to cast their stuff on my turn. But of course, if they just keep hitting land drops, it's not gonna make it too difficult to cast a one mana spell. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, the Tithe Taker effects are cumulative, yes. I certainly expect my opponent to have like a bunch of spell pierces and dive downs and things like that. I don't really want to place spells as much. I don't have as high of a value on spells. Really wanted to draw a second or a f another land here to be able to to double spell. Called it on the spell pierce. Really wanted to be able to double spell. Oh, I meant to activate vigilance here. Whoops. Yeah, double spelling would have been really nice with this tithe taker. That thing's out of here, finally. And Seraph trades with Jin right now. If they put a, an obsession on the Jin, that'll be bad, of course. Oh, dive down. Right. We're gonna have to wait till next turn. Oh, come on, a second Jin. Just got stuck on mana. We need to not get stuck on mana like that. And History Banali is going to be a lot better on the play also. It's a lot more threatening on the play. What kind of decks are good against mono blue? Um, aggressive creature decks like mono white, for example. Mono white is really good against mono blue um, but just creature decks where you where uh, you know you don't mind spell pierce and dive down as much but you can just put pressure on the battlefield uh, before they start countering stuff well Memorial of Folly is a huge huge bummer here it would be nice to like be able to lead duress and, and so on um, Because of Tithe Taker, we don't really need to be worried about um, just need to draw lands. We don't need to be worried about uh, the cast down not killing their creature during our turn. Probably should just play Mortify there. Cost more mana. Alright, well. 
still get to mortify. I think we're doing some doing some work for us. Dive down, chart a course. Let's get rid of chart a course. Uh, Sarah with the scales, you know, can have death touch and can trade with Terramander. Of course, they do have Trickster, though. Ooh, another Seraph. Other Seraph is good. So if they want to Trickster on my turn, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost them four mana because the Tithe Takers. Not so bad. Land. Ugh. I wanted land here to be able to give the Seraph Death Touch. That's what I really wanted. So we'll just give the Seraph Death Touch, kill the Terramander. Um, and then play Resplendent Angel. Alright, good. The last card is not a counter spell that we don't know about. Okay. Three and one. Not so bad. Three and one. So we got beat up by Sultai really bad, but as long as we're not playing against Sultai, we won our other matches. I feel like we're going to draw a white source. I think we're going to draw a white source here. Not a white card, Resplendent Angel. We need a white source. Esper Control is kind of the worst thing we want to s that we could see. In this scenario, Splendid Angel not so good against Kaya's Wrath. So getting the Tithe Taker down to keep them from absorbing. Uh, 
Alright, five power on the battlefield. That's probably pretty good. Death stuff with the Twitch Prime sub. Thanks, Death. Thanks for getting keeping that going. That is sub number nine on the day. And the fourth month for Death Stuff. Nine on the day. Library. And it looks like we're actually back to 88. So, our really, really hope our opponent doesn't have Kaiser at this turn, but, you know, I'd certainly expect them to. But that'd be really nice if they don't. They don't. Okay. We're in business. We're in business. No Kaya's Wrath. And we get a Midnight Reaper in play. Tuffery. I'm known. Hurry! I'm known hurry. So you're in no hurry, or... Having Midnight Reaper, I don't mind kind of exp ex extending a little bit here, even though I guess they just tuck Midnight Reaper with Teferi and then Kai's Wrath. We need to move uh, quickly. Hey, Smick. Is that game? Get some pressure on the opponent? There are three lands. Tilt. At least that means no wrath, though. Just kind of have to. Oh yeah, that's that's game. Because even if they have contempt, whatever they contempt, we just cast down it. And then they take four. There we go. Ah, uh, settled. Now nah, they they won't have settle. Nah, Pono wouldn't do anything like that. Um, cast down is out. Hmm, this is 64. Taking out Lyra's make this 61. So we're at 60. Um, the question is if I want to take out two other cards for Find Finality. Which I don't think I want to. I want to keep it just like this. A lot of Asper people play Settle. Well, good thing our opponent didn't. So I was not playing around it. Don't know if we could really play around it anyway with like Teferi, Searcher, Scanta being on the battlefield. We can't just like sit back forever. I like Mortify to destroy his Kanta. Um, I could certainly see trimming some. Maybe I don't need all of them. But as Kanta is a card that I think I really want to destroy him. Plus, the other thing is um, I could see our opponent having Lyra or Hostage Taker. We see those come in, or I guess they could have Thieves of Sanity. But like those are some things that you see after sideboarding with Esper. And so I, I like having a little bit of removal um, in there. No, my Tithe Ticker. I could certainly see playing a Tumble Garden for finality. Just have one in the deck. 
over a basic planes. That is certainly reasonable. No Teferi, please. All right, no Teferi. And then we drew the contempt for Teferi anyway. Um, the Immortal Sun is like our best friend. That's the card we want to draw. Playing Doom Whisperer would like allow us to find the Immortal Sun a lot easier. So they did have a settle. Settle and Kaya's Wrath. In fact. Kind of easier to play around Settle than to play around Kai's Wrath. No! I need to kill that. Five cards? The other thing about Settle is it gets us basic lands. Alright, Doom Whisperer, find us the Immortal Sun, please. Of course, we don't have enough basics quite yet. But we will. Alright, they can flip Escanta next turn, or maybe just find me Mortify. Mortify would be good. Yeah, actually, I'll just take Mortif Mortify. Or Duress. That last card's a brick in their hand. They kind of dead. Angel of Grace. Hmm. So they go down to one. That's exiled so they don't get the... Don't need to like put their life total back up to ten or anything. So they're just down to one. No cards in hand, but they have an Escanta. These cards don't trigger on Reaper for Kaya's Wrath anyway, because Midnight Reaper is non-token creature, so I would have only drawn one card from Kaya's Wrath. So I certainly think the taking Settle was the right thing. Or sorry, taking Kaya's Wrath and leaving them with Settle. Uh, thanks, Eaton. All right, we are four and one. Let's see if we can get our fifth win. Final boss time. Final boss music. Here we go. Hoping not Sultai. We got destroyed by Sultai earlier. We've beaten basically everything else. Uh, you know, mono red, mono blue, Esper control. We've beaten the rest of the gauntlet, but not Sultai. And I don't like our chances against Sultai. No, this is a donation deck. Um, it was donated to, to play. All right, the Mold of Five. I like the opponent on the Mold of Five. Hey, good job, Equinox. Gold tier four for the first time. Good job. 
All right, so who moles to five and then concedes? What deck is my opponent playing? Mold to five, concede. Like a low land aggro deck is kind of likely. It's easier, you know, the more lands they have, the harder it is to like mulligan like that. But, you know, could be kind of either end of the spectrum. I'm going to get. I'm going to kind of sideboard like it's low land aggro. Like mono red or mono blue. Let's just sideboard like that. So we bring in Duress Moment. Um, Reaper out. Chupa out. Contempt in. Whisper is kind of good. No, Final Fantasy VIII wasn't necessarily my jam. I liked seven and nine, and ten. I like seven, nine, and ten more. But the th the four, those four games, I liked quite a bit. Um, I I didn't play eight too much. I only played eight. Like, I think I only played through it completely one time. And that was close to twenty years ago. And I don't remember it. Too, too much. I want to. I want to replay through eight. Eventually. Is the 7 remake just going to be like the exact same game? They're keeping Wild Growth Walker? Not sure exactly why, they're, why they are keeping Wild Growth Walker here. I think it's at like the end of this year for like the, um, the Final Fantasy 7 remake, right? Is it like end of 2019? No? Oh, okay. Ah, oh, they keep pushing it back. Well, I've played 7 and 9 pretty recently on my phone. Um, played through both those games again. I uh, did that when I was traveling to tournaments and everything, like when I was on the plane flights, because um, you know, it didn't require an internet connection. So like all like those three-hour flights and stuff when I was flying from Dallas to places, I was just playing Final Fantasy 7 or 9 on my, on my phone during the flights if I wasn't sleeping. What? They didn't even play the Wild Growth Walker first? This has to be like Disdainful Stroke or something here? Whatever. Still just gonna play my thing. No? <laughs> you blame the Triple Triad for getting into card games? Just a bounce spell. Crack 
Crushing Canopy. That's the card they had. Okay. That's a good card for them here. Puts me down to six with this attack. Uh, pretty good attack here, and they still have chemistry in sight. Kind of doing its thing. Too bad angels are so strong, though. So risky. If, if that last card is like another crushing canopy, I'm dead by attacking here. They would like kill the Lyra in response. A little risky. But no, it was not another crushing canopy. It was a forest. Wow, that crushing canopy was, was close by. So they're at five. I'm at five. We're all at five. All right, back up to seven. Back down to five. Hey, Sly's in here, gifting out some subs. Thank you so much, Sly. So, new subs. Enjoy your awesome emotes. Hope you use them in the chat. Um, maybe you'll like it enough to continue on your subscription for next month. We have Somnus D Spires. Question four. Everybody lies. Um, and Launches. I love it, life here. Getting that big hype in the channel. There we go. So that is gets us to 14 on the day. Got to our next goal. 14 means we were one away from another goal. We'll be getting um, a pack here after this one. Let's see. It tells me we are. 84. So there we go. Thank you so much, Sly. Kind of odd that my opponent wanted to um, sacrifice a wild growth walker for two points of damage. If they're like a lightning strike deck, I could see that being the case. They like, you know, they just want to have lightning strikes. But give that, give that an out for them. Hey, Mass Day's been going pretty good. All right, five wins. Ooh, and we got two rares that I don't have. You know, usually we just get gems, so real good league. Let's see, what's our rares? We have a Profane Procession. That's a good card. Good card. And Firemind's Research. That that copy of Firemind's Research right there that we just opened up is the very last card in Guilds of Ravnica I did not have. So now I have four four X of the entire Guilds of Ravnica set. That was that one Firemind's Research was the very last card. All right, and 
Pack time. Thanks to Sly. Let's go Rivals again. Let's see if we can get another Storm the Vault. We got one earlier. We got two for two. Ah, the Dead Man's Chest. I think Dead Man's Chest here is the last card that I own that I did own zero of. Uh, you know, last rare mythic that I owned zero of. Or rare. There's a mythic, I guess. The Victus is a mythic I own zero of. All right. <laughs> Time for Guilds of Ravnica packs. So there we go. So Orzhov midrange uh, still did pretty good. You know, we went 5-1. Um, let's update this over here to say 5-1. I am very, very worried about the... Uh, um, the Soul Tie matchup, though, with this deck. That's a matchup that I am incredibly, incredibly worried about. I don't, I just feel like they just have so many things that are good against us. Um, I kind of feel like, like maybe you just have to play like Honor Guards for that matchup. Um, but then if we're playing Honor Guards, we don't get the Squires and the Chupacabras that were pretty good against a lot of other decks. So it's kind of tough. Um, but, but yeah, besides that, um, Ix the Immortal Sun, of course, is awesome against um, Soul Tide, but we didn't get, get there. But Hostage Shaker was just a huge problem for us without Takali Honor Guard. I, I'm not sure if Chupacabra and S Seeker Squire playing those are, are better than Honor Guards, honestly. We probably should just be playing four Honor Guards instead of Squires because of that that matchup. Uh, DD are for donation decks. They're for decks that people donate to see played, but do like having Chupacabras. Like, that's a really good card. So it's it's kind of a tough call, but as constructed, I just think that we're a real big dog to um, to Sultai. History of Benalia didn't really do anything um, for us. So we're Kind of a little surprised by how, like, with that card, but, you know, that's, uh, it's just five matches there, but it was not too powerful. But all right, if you're watching this later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like always, um, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next video.